teams going the other direction. It'll be Bryce Workman to jump it up for Jacksonville. Nick Thielen for Bellerman. Ball in the air, underway on a Friday night at Freedom Hall. Knights control the tip in white as you watch it. Jacksonville in the road greens here on this Friday. There you see the Bellerman starters. Pedro Bradshaw, the leading scorer of this Bellerman team, averaging just over 14 a game. It's a very balanced scoring effort from the Knights. Pedro Bradshaw, he's under the rack, he can shoot it. He can really take over a game, but the offense really flows through him. They've got four players, like I said, uh, and he, he can really get it going for the GC pin there. He can get it going for the hole as well. They've got to have those two guys uh, the rest of the year start off early hard. Ben had it blocked there. You know, James, the leading scorer. Bryce Workman, the leading rebounder, averaging just over six a game on this Jacksonville team. And here is James, double teamed early by Bellerman. And there's the rob on the kick out and the three in for Trey Sides, the sophomore from Phillipsburg, Kansas. And that's a direct correlation of Nolan being out, uh, Bellerman doubling down on James, and James doing a great job of finding a, a shooter in the corner. He's a guy that can pass it when you double him, and there's a steal by Workman as Bellerman turning it over after a, a block shot and a good start defensively here for the Dolphins. Go into Workman, who goes to work on Thielen. Solid, hard post up by Workman. Great work underneath, great work early. Here's to believe that they deserve to be here. And a shout out from Rick Patino, the Iona head coach, of course. Coach Davenport, a former assistant under Rick Patino at Louisville. And some kudos as well from the national sports media, Pat Forty, national writer for Sports Illustrated, former Yahoo Sports, and uh, both talking about how it's not surprising to them to see Bellerman at the top of the league. It might be to some fans, but a lot in the basketball community not finding this surprising at all. Yeah, Scott Davenport's not about bringing the best of talent in. And it's not saying that he's not bringing it in, but he's putting teams together. Um, and that's what he's known for doing and getting the best out of his players and playing their system. And that system is the most fundamental basketball that, that's around. Pedro Bradshaw with a three to get Bellerman on the board. The other way, a missed three by Mo Arnold of Jacksonville, and Bradshaw the rebound. Great what play. a pass as Bradshaw finds Thielen for the easy lay-in. And we see a hard cut there as one of the keys, keys of the game. That's a hard cut, a great look, and that's going to open up a little thing for the next couple minutes here. Beautiful feed there is Bradshaw hitting the three and gets the assist on Bellerman's second bucket. Nick Thielen with a chance to complete the three-point play and does. The foul was called on Workman the first of the game. And Bellerman answers a 5-0 start from Jacksonville with six straight of its own. And there's an offensive foul on the screen as Fleming went down. They call the foul on Arnold his first. That was a hard collision. And we talked about how, and there's a foul, another quick one on Jacksonville. That one goes against Tyrese Davis, the redshirt sophomore from Kansas City, his first. But Bellerman tied for tops in the league, of course. There you see the standings. Bellerman ineligible for the NCAA tournament, a four-year transition period, so this is the first of four straight tournaments they cannot participate in. However, if they were to win the ace on regular season, they could compete in the NIT. So that's a, a goal out there for the Knights, if they can stay on top and still matchups left with both Liberty and North Alabama. Bradshaw gets around underneath. He has five points. He is assisted on Bellerman's other bucket, and it's an 8-5 Bellerman lead. You know, not even being able to compete in this NCAA tournament. As a competitor, these guys want to win their conference. They want to make a statement. Uh, these guys, they work in and out. That's what they do. That's what they live for. Uh, and, and so I, I expect them to really go for it this year uh, uh, and want to, uh, to make a statement uh, their first year in, in this conference. Bellerman on an 8-0 run after falling into a 5-0 hole early. Looking to add to the lead. This is Dylan Penn, the junior from Evansville, Indiana. Gives it off for Bradshaw, who's been huge early. 
Ten to shoot for the Knights. And what a pass to Thielen. Great penetration, great look. That's what Bellarmine needs to do. That's straight back to the cuts. Uh, and great finisher from a pin. That's what he is. That's his bread and butter. He needs to do that every time that he gets the ball and a good look. And there's a turnover. Fleming comes up with it for Bellerman. Knights on a 10-0 run. Bradshaw hits Fleming. Bradshaw. No. And the rebound knocked out of bounds by James. It'll stay with Bellerman. Knights on a 10-0 run early. Not a nice year. Has seen his team in a lot of close battles in a Sun play and trying to find a way to get back in the win column, having lost five straight entering tonight. Bellerman the ball out of the timeout. Justin Betts has checked in. The Knights turn it over. It's their second turnover. Here's James, missed the pull up, and Alec Freem grabs the rebound for Bellerman, the sophomore from Cincinnati. Sam DeVault with the ball also in, transfer from Austin P. That feeds Penn. Lacombe with a dish to Freem. It seems that Bellerman gets within 10 feet of the basket, they get a good shot. That's a, the, that's the third dump down they've got. Bring the defense to them and a clear, clear pass to the rim. Uh, it's noticeable that they're really looking to bring that defense to them and looking for that dump down. James misses the three. There's Freem with a rebound. Freem was enormous for Bellerman last week as uh, he scored 21 Friday night against Kennesaw State, a career high for him, an early bucket here tonight. And this is Justin Betts in the lane, couldn't get that one to drop, and Osini Kamara into the game for Jacksonville, the junior from Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, and there's a travel. Great defense, he walled up early, made him commit to a, uh, to a move, and then really walled off late there and made him turn it over. But he had no really where to go, and that, that's a great defensive play. You can wall off early, a little bit outside of the paint, and create a little bit of havoc for, uh, for the offensive player. You see Derek Flowers checking in, senior from Frisco, Texas, for Jacksonville. Mo Arnold returns as well. Hellerman's run is a 12-0 burst now. They fell behind 5-0, but have answered with a 12-0 run after the timeout. Claycomb in the paint gets a tough one to go. His first points. Senior from Vincennes, Indiana. Transfer from Indiana State, Ethan Claycomb. Asun player of the week earlier this year, but first in Bellerman history. Knights make it a 14-0 run. Kamara finally able to stem the run as he picks up his first points. Sam Duvall using his height, missed the jumper, and James the rebound. I expect Bellerman to go to James. Hopefully get him in a little bit of foul trouble, get him up in the air a little bit. Uh, get him to commit and get up into his body to, to get him up. Uh, into a couple fouls here early in this game. He got into foul trouble their Friday night game against Liberty. They were swept by Liberty in a pair of close games last weekend, and James got three first half fouls in the Friday night game. As that three wouldn't go for DeVault, and Flowers grabs the board. It's a 64 58 loss Saturday to Liberty at home for Jacksonville, and then fell. 59-54 last Friday night, and that's the game where James got into the foul trouble. And there's a foul as Arnold on the drive. He took a hard hit as Ethan Claycomb whistled for his first foul. Here's another look at it. Not quite as much as I thought in, uh, in real time. Looked like he was basically putting all his eggs in the uh, basket of drawing that foul. <laughs> you got to sell the Two foul a little bit. Hey, 
and Coach Davenport questioning whether he was in the act of shooting as Arnold to the line couldn't hit the first free throw. These are the best and worst free throw shooting teams in the A-Sun. Bellarmine shooting over 75% from the line, tops in the league. Jacksonville 64.5% coming in last in the league. As the conversation continues, the Bellarmine sideline. Arnold gets one out of two. Bellerman quickly ahead. And a great cut. That's what we're talking about. If they can cut early, get going to the rack, it is an easy bucket for them almost every time down the court. As we see it again within the 10 feet, a good, easy bucket for Bellerman. Four early points for Alex Cream. A couple of early assists for Pedro Bradshaw. Eight points to Bellerman lead. Under 12 and a half to go in the first half. Kamara, collision, offensive foul. Justin Betts takes the charge. Kamara picks up his first and fourth. That's something else this Bellarmine team does very well. They love to draw charges on the defensive end. It's a selfless play. This is a very selfless team. That's how they play. They don't care how many people score. Uh, they don't care who scores. As long as they win the game and they, they do the rest on the possession, that's Bellarmine basketball. Justin Betts in the paint. It's the little hook. Arnold the rebound. Mo Arnold, the sophomore from Picayune, Mississippi. A really good rebounding guard. He averages five and a half rebounds a game. And there he is hitting the jumper over Betts. Ace on all freshman team last year. Mo Arnold. Averaging seven points, five and a half rebounds so far this year. Bellarmine never settles on one side of the court for too long. That's why they are very, 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 very good at getting open shots. Uh, and that's towards the realm. It's not just sideline, but from the wing, top of the key. It's because the ball never settles on one side of the court too long. It's been the brand here under Scott Davenport's time. His 16th season with Bellarmine. And it has been what they've been known for, the incredible passing. Eight to shoot for Jacksonville. Kamara couldn't get the three off. They work it into James. He's doubled, has to force the shot, and a foul called with one on the shot clock. James headed to the line. Bellerman with the early contributors for the squad. Yeah, a couple veterans always to lead the way. They've been through it. They've been through uh, tough games before. That really, really matters, uh, especially at this level. Uh, those two guys that make up that much uh, of, the, of the scoring is absolutely critical for Bellerman. Uh, they, they get the good shots, uh, but they also lead examples for the, the younger classmen for the, for the future. Uh, so I think it's super important to have a solid core group of veterans on the team. Ash Whelan was called for the foul before the break. His first. James Cans both free throws. And Bradshaw wide open to lay it in. He has seven early points. Nick, they don't miss an open guy too, too often. And Bradshaw was that. Ellerman was just one for its last five from the floor before getting that one to go. One of those upperclassmen you just talked about, the junior, a lot of leadership from those five guys on this Bellarmine team and there's a heady play by the veteran Penn able to get the back tap and Jacksonville keeps it with 11 on the shot clock Tyrese Davis with four to shoot tough shot over Claycomb got it to go what a great, great possession for them. They waited to the very last moment. They got it to the guy they needed to go to. And a tough shot at the end, but, but they got to the middle of the lane, and, and that's where they want to be. Tyrese Davis averaging 11 and a half points per game, the redshirt sophomore from Kansas City. Claycomb buries the three right over James. You got to get a hand up on Claycomb. He's a great shooter, and when he gets hot, he can really, really get it going. 21st made three of the season for Ethan Claycomb. Shooting it at about 35%. Arnold with a tough drive. He finishes. He's got five. He is lightning quick. He's got a 
step or two ahead of everyone on the court today, and uh, you can tell right there. Pin on the cut. He's able to finish the layup. Another assist for Bradshaw. And another great cut, a great find. That's their bread and butter. They're going to continue to go with that cut, and they're really looking to pass the ball today. Here is Arnold. We talk about what the Dolphins can do, and there's a foul as Flowers on the drive, and uh, foul call against Whelan, his second. What do you see from this Dolphins team for us? They're an extremely young team. Uh, really, they rely on Dontarius James and Nolan. And Nolan being out, it really, really affects them and the way they play, their makeup, their team. Uh, but defensively, they have really active hands. And hands are, 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 for them, it gets their offensive going defensively does. Uh, so if they can get a couple of deflections here and there, that is what they really rely on defensively, but it also turns into their offense. Averaging just over seven steals per game, third most in the A-Sun entering play here tonight. And you can tell James is really looking to take advantage of smaller guards that are getting into the post. Well, that time the double team and Bradshaw able to tie it up. Jump ball and the arrow keeps it with Jacksonville. 14 on the shot clock for the Dolphins. As Justin Betts returns to the lineup for Bellerman with C.J. Fleming going to the back. You've uh, referenced it, Forrest, as Jacksonville on the inbound. They're playing without a key player in Kevion Nolan. As James misses, but foul call. It goes against Betts, his first. And that was pure power. Uh, we talk about James and how he affects this ball game. Um, they're really trying to find him in the post. Uh, he's been a little frustrated. They haven't found him sooner. Um, but right there, you can tell that is pure power that he got to the rim there and got to the free throw line. James at the line. Misses the first after he hit his first two. He's only got two points so far. And uh, you talked about Kevion Nolan being out. 16 and a half points a game. Has only played in seven games for this team. Hurt himself in the second practice of the year. Was out until they went to Miami in mid-December. And uh, unfortunately hurt himself a couple of weekends ago in their first game against North Alabama. And out this weekend. And they're not exactly sure when they'll get him back. But hopeful they will. But that's a big offensive punch that uh, Jacksonville doesn't have. Yeah, and it changes the whole defensive game for Bellerman. They really have one guy to focus on. You're losing 16 points, but you're also losing someone that takes a little bit of that pressure off of James uh, and, and opens him up to do his thing a little bit. There's a Bellerman turnover. Sides hits the three. Great looking shot. Trey Sides, the sophomore, with his second made three. He's got six points tonight. And it's a three-point game. Side-to-side -side action again, looking for Pedro Bradshaw in the middle, but never sits on one side of the floor, floor too, too long. Bradshaw fouled. That one goes against Flowers. His first. Bellerman up three with under eight to go in the first half. Hey, they have a balanced attack from their upperclassmen. Uh, like we talked about before, they have four guys that can really, really score. And, you know, CJ Fleming here is the guy that really, really conducts all of their offense. Uh, he, he last weekend had 22 points, was six for ten in the field goal, uh, and shot two for four at three point line. But ever since the Notre Dame game, which is his very first game back, he's played with confidence and he's really got the game, uh, uh, got the team playing uh, at their probably their highest peak uh, uh, of basketball. Yeah, started the season in the COVID protocols, missed the first three games, and uh, he's definitely been a, a big lift, no doubt. As that one's missed, and the ball knocked out of bounds. It'll go to Bellerman, but of course, you, you've been able to see a difference in this team since he came back, right? 
Yeah, I mean, he's he's their, the guy that go through, uh, him and, and Pedro Bradshaw, uh, uh, you know, for them to, to be able to, to together pull the defense to them to create that uh, worry on defense, it allows players like Ethan Claycombs and, and Freem to really have nights and, and takes the pressure off of them as Pedro Bradshaw hits another shot. You know, it's... It's the things that they do that create things for other people that make them such a solid basketball team. Bradshaw now with 11 points. Came in averaging just over 14 with seven rebounds per game. He's fifth in the league in rebounding coming in. That three missed by James and Bradshaw grabs the board right on cue. And they've got to get James playing with a little bit of confidence here. They want a chance in this basketball game. He does not have a field goal, only three points so far, all at the line. That's ran into a wall. Play call. Nowhere to go with it. Has to force it up and left it short. Bradshaw with another board, and he's fouled. There he is, Pedro Bradshaw going to the glass as Mo Arnold picks up his second foul. They never give up on a play, create a second shot. And this is uh, Pedro's bread and butter. He, he never gives up on a play. He is great at going, getting second chance shots. He came from the wing here to get this uh, rebound and, and created, uh, you know, a, another opportunity for the, the Knights to to get an easy shot, um, you know, going to the free throw line, being the number one free throw team in the league. Um, this is a, a good opportunity for them uh, to show how much, you know, Pedro and, and CJ Fleming can, can create for this offense. One out of two for Bradshaw. The seventh leading offensive rebounder in the A Sun, averaging about 1.8 a game and grabbed one there to earn the trip to the line. James, no. And Freem snatches the rebound from behind. Betts just fell down and Sides able to steal it away. Bellerman's built the lead back up to eight. James with a tough drive and Betts trying to draw the charge called for the blocking foul. It's the second on Justin Betts. And this is where James has done all of his scoring so far tonight. He's been at the free throw line. And they are not going to give him free throws here. They're going to say he was not in the act of shooting. As we see Betts go to the bench with that second foul. Romick has checked in, the senior from Rhode, Massachusetts for Jacksonville. Only played in one of two games last week. Bradshaw with a block. Freem right back to Penn. Missed it high off the glass, and Workman the rebound. A great look, a good extra pass there to, to get the defense headed towards one player, and then another easy dump off. Uh, just missed it a little bit. The drive by Davis gets inside and finishes with a right hand. What a story for him and a knee injury in the final regular season game for Jacksonville two years ago. Missed all of last year. Returned this season in the first game of the year for the Dolphins. Hit his first shot. It was his first game in 641 days. And he's a big part of this team. And great that he's been able to get back out there after having to miss all of last year. Bradshaw with a spin around. And that's what Davis did last weekend on Friday night in that close loss to Liberty. 20 points, five rebounds, four assists. Solid performance, balance. He's a great addition with Nolan being out. They're going to rely on him to bring a little pressure off James. He's struggling a little bit this morning, or this, after, this first half of this game. Bradshaw doing it all, got the steal, couldn't finish, but Penn there for... The putback and a timeout, Jacksonville. Transfer from Xavier has been enormous. Kevion Nolan, a junior, and the sophomore in Davis, who we talked about earlier. They're going to be a solid team next year uh, with these three guys coming back, uh, getting a little bit of confidence this year, and really going into next year being a, a, a very veteran heavy team. Uh, I look forward to them to do very, very well in the A Sun next year.
Inside, that wouldn't go for Cameron Boozer, who's in for the first time. Freshman from Lynette, Alabama. He and his twin brother, Zamarin, both on this Jacksonville team. There's a block by Boozer as Bradshaw couldn't get the shot off. That's what both can do. Six and nine twins, the Boozer twins. And Tony Jasic said he was very happy to get them. A unique situation. They wanted to go to the same school, and so they had the scholarship space available and able to get them. That three wouldn't fall, but the offensive rebound, rebound run down by Flowers. Tough shot. Davis missed the three, and Bradshaw claims another board. Claycomb open. His second made three. He's got eight points, and Bellerman has its biggest lead. Bradshaw there getting the rebound, coming down the floor, finding the open player, and Claycomb again hitting the shot like we talked about. If he hits the first one, he's going to get hot in the game, and you see it here. Green trying to rip it away and gets the tie up on Davis. Jump ball in the arrow, gives it back over to Bellerman. James was getting a rare break for Jacksonville. He's back in there. Thielen returns as Bradshaw gets a breather for the Knights. Bellerman in front by 13 with under three minutes left in the first half. Jacksonville started the game 5-0. Bellerman went on a 14-0 run to go in front and haven't relinquished the lead. Clay Cole missed that three. That one looked good, too. He's got a great-looking shot. Hit the back of the rim. He's still got to feel good about that shot. From where I'm sitting, that looked like it was going in all the way. What a spin there by size, but... On right into Clay Coleman, knocks it away out of bounds. 13 to shoot for Jacksonville as Bradshaw comes back in for Bellerman. Hey, stay tuned at halftime, by the way, coming up in uh, just over two minutes to learn all about the ASUN expansion, which uh, came out a couple of weeks ago. And big news in the ASUN with three new teams joining. And we'll learn all about them coming up at halftime. Sides misses the three. Really developing a strong conference in every sport. Ace is doing a great job uh, putting together some, some, some really, really good uh, some conference teams. Announcing today as well the addition of men's lacrosse as a conference sport. Coming along, certainly the A Sun building in a lot of areas. Sides. And up to James. Dream able to stay in front. Sides lost it, got it back. Shot clock down to six. James in the post. No, follow from Boozer not there. And there's Bradshaw for the rebound. I'd like to see Jacksonville really kind of open up for James. They're, they're setting some screens for him, but they're really crowding it at the top of the key. And it's creating some extra help on defense that if they would just open up, he could take his man one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, those The screens up top are really, really making Bellerman double down on him. James got the block on the other end, has it again. This time they clear some space. Gives it out front to Davis. Missed the three. Bradshaw couldn't hold on to the rebound. And Jacksonville gets it back with a minute left in the first half. Arnold back for the Dolphins. There's Ethan Claycomb coming back on for Bellerman. Thielen over to the bench. He hasn't had a lot of room to operate. Still no field goals in this game for James. He has three points all at the free throw line. Bellman's frustrated him. I mean, every time he gets to the right, you'll see a second guy here frustrating him to the point where he's trying to force something that's not there, and that's an offensive turnover. Uh, offensive foul, and that's when he got the three fouls last Friday night. It was a lot of this, getting that shoulder down, and, and he has a tendency to do that and charging into guys. He's bigger than guys. He can be more physical, and that allows him mentally to think that he can go and go, and Bellerman's going to sit there, and they're going to get in front of you, and they're going to take the charge. And on the drive, takes it out for Freem. 
Alec Cream doesn't shoot a lot of threes, but has been true when he does. Now six out of 11 on the season from beyond the arc. He has seven points. And he continues his hot streak. Big weekend last weekend and back at it here tonight. About an eight second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Here's Arnold. The shot clock at six. James with a tough three. Missed badly. Claycomb up high for the rebound. Bellerman with six seconds. Claycomb finds Cream. Erased at the rim by Boozer. And that's the end of the first half. Bellerman with an impressive first half, though. The Knights coming in having won six. Welcome back to Freedom Hall. Bellerman has its biggest lead of the night, a 16-point lead at halftime. Everyone's been awkwardly waiting on us, and here we go. We're back, ready to go for the second half. Bellerman shot 51.5% in the first half for us, and they were 4 of 7 from 3, just uh, running everything at a high level in half number 1. And that's, uh, like we talked about before, it's about getting good shots. That's getting deep in the lane getting a couple defenders to him and then kicking it to good shooters. And defensively, they've done that. They've made life tough on Dontarius James. They blocked his first shot here of half number two. And they've got to get him going. Uh, uh, James, uh, Davis, uh, they've got to get those guys a little bit of confidence here in the second half. Uh, and, and that's how they're going to get back in this game. James comes up with a steal there, a big play. He only had three points in the first half. All came at the free throw line. Didn't have a field goal. Here is Davis, who had four first half points, and he's fouled. That one goes against Dylan Penn, his first. No, Nick, Jacksonville, I expect them to get James a little bit of isolation going. Uh, the first half, we, Bellerman doubled down several times. Uh, you see it here. Uh, if he can get to the wing, it, Davis is also a, a very good back-to-the-basket player. If they can get him going as well, um, those are two players that can open up a little bit of offense uh, for some other guys to get going, which I think that's what they need for James to get going as well uh, so the defense can kind of back off and stop doubling a little bit. Bryce Workman averages 10 a game. He only had two in the first half. He was tied up by Clay Cole and an early turnover committed by Jacksonville. Ten now in the game. They had nine first half turnovers. And Clay Cole can't convert on the three. Arnold the rebound for the Dolphins. Jacksonville averages about 14 and a half turnovers a game and uh, well ahead of that pace right now. Bellerman, five turnovers so far, taking good care of it. Lost by sides, has to dive on the floor to save it, and a timeout call to save the possession. A timeout taken by Jacksonville. Oh. Lame little dots. I could get any three toppings on my large pizza for just 10 bucks. Pepperoni, sausage. Well, never mind. No timeout called by Jacksonville. They wave off the timeout, and Davis misses the three as the Dolphins kept possession. All the benefits of the timeout without actually being charged one there. And misses the floater, and there's Davis for the rebound. Neither team's been able to score here in the second half so far. Arnold misses. Tough offensive rebound. Workman can't hit the follow. But it bounces out to James, who buries an open three, his first field goal of the night. Offensive rebound from Workman, who coming in averages about 2.4 a game, second most in the A Sun. And there's Bradshaw. How big has he been tonight? He's got 16 points. He, he outworks his defender almost every time. And it's not just when he has the ball, it's off ball, too. He gets a second possession. That's his third of the game. Uh, Bradshaw is a very key player on, on the defensive side. We don't talk about it too, too often. He's got six rebounds to go along with 16 points, four assists, hasn't turned it over. But now James starting to get going. He hit that one shot, gets a nice pass there, and finishes. He has eight. And I like James not technically having the ball at the top of the key and letting someone else kind of bring the defense to him and kicking it off to James uh, to get him a little bit going here in the second half. Jacksonville down 13. 
Martin, a claw his way back into it. Fleming hits the pull off. CJ Fleming has had a quiet night offensively. That his first bucket. A great looking shot. Uh, a couple steps to the elbow and a great pull up by CJ Fleming. Quick move. Arnold on the drive. He has seven. Jacksonville, nine games this year have been decided by nine points or less. And in seven of those, the opponent is led by double digits. So they've made it their business to fight back in the games, trying to do it again here tonight. And this time, Bradshaw fouled going to the basket. That's on Davis. And here we see Dontarius James getting going. He's obviously the best offensive player. Uh, he, he draws a lot of defense to him. Uh, I, Good to see him get a couple shots going for Jacksonville. They're really going to need him to get going, but I'd like to see Davis. I'd like to see a couple of their guards get deeper into the lane and create something for him underneath the basket that he doesn't have to create himself going towards the rim. Bradshaw at the line. Foul was Davis second. Bradshaw hits a pair, and he's got 18. Lead 15 for Bellarmine. The Knights led by 16 at halftime. Four minutes gone here in the second half. Davis double teamed, able to pass out of it. Sides off the fake, missed the three. Davis the rebound and he's fouled. Foul called on Alec Green, his first. But same two teams on back-to-back -back nights. It's made for an interesting thing to follow after that first game for us to see how both teams come back, winning and losing the next night. Yeah, I mean, you get to see your opponent. I mean, it, it's uh, uh, basically what you do in practice. It, it, you get to see everyone running their sets, and then you get to digest that the, the night before the game in between. Uh, and, and it's a great test for both teams going back to back like that. And the offensive rebound off the default miss, but he's called for the travel. Jacksonville continues to try to fight its way back into this game. But an interesting note about the back to backs Bellerman is the only team in the league to have two road sweeps this year they swept at Florida Gulf Coast and then of course last weekend at Kennesaw State and uh, Bellarmine's the only team to have gone on the road and picked up two sweeps to this point in the season so it's not an easy thing to do yeah that's they played their basketball and, and you know that's what they're good at doing they're going to do that both nights in a row uh, and so they're going to do well on the road Dylan 10 with a finish he has six but those two road sweeps a big reason why Bellarmine comes into the night tied for first in the A Sun along with North Alabama and Liberty if you can win the road games that that's a big big feat and with a couple home games here a couple wins they're putting a really really good win to loss ratio Knights have come in having won six straight games Jacksonville has lost five in a row. Both teams have played in a lot of close games. Jacksonville, seven of its eight conference games have been decided by six points or less, including four of the five in this five-game losing streak. Bradshaw called for the travel before he could get the shot away. A couple of turnovers consecutively there by the Knights. They now have seven in the game. Jacksonville's committed 12. James, and off the ball, Betts went down and an offensive foul. It goes against Bryce Workman, his second. And Workman is very physical underneath. He works early to get position, and, and sometimes that can, can lead to a, a foul. A, a lot of physical play back and forth with guys on defense. Uh, but he's a hard, hard, hard player. He's had a quiet night offensively, only two points. Does have three rebounds and a steal on the night. That was actually at him for a second, but that's actually his third foul. Here's a jumper by default, and he knocks it in. Bellerman uh, really takes this, 
the pressure and a double team and makes Jacksonville pay for it. Uh, the pressure doesn't really, really affect C.J. Fleming, and these guards, uh, Penn, they're really solid when it comes to a, a three-quarters court pressure. An open three for Davis. Tyrese Davis now with eight points, his first made three, an all-freshman team performer in the A-Sun two years ago and then missed last year with the injury and a key member back in the fold this year for Jacksonville, as we talked about earlier. DeVault misses, but bets with the offensive rebound. And it's doing the little things, getting possession uh, early on his defensive player and, and really getting his uh, a spot, a place in a spot where he can get that uh, defensive or offensive rebound. Step back from Davis. Missed that one. Penn with a rebound. Early shot in the in the possession. <laughs> Definitely worked it around, found an early, a better shot than that. And that's a charge call on Penn. His second and sides took the hit. Crowd didn't like that one here at Freedom Hall. Kind of a sheepish look on Dylan Penn's face. Pretty good effort by sides on the uh, on the enhancement, if you will. That's a good point. There's a lay-in by Mo Arnold. Our producer Craig Miller making the point that it is very nearly Academy Award season. Trey Sides may be in the mix. The ball blocked by James, and Davis comes out with it for Jacksonville. Overcommitted a little bit on offense. If he took a hard jump stop there, created a little bit of defensive pressure to himself, and then kicked it to the guy underneath. He's got a little too far. That was called on Sam DeVault, his first. He goes to the bench. Clay Coleman, Fleming back in for Bellarmine. Penn heads to the bench as well. 24 on the Jacksonville shot clock. Arnold looking to attack. Find sides in the corner. He's got nine points all off of made threes in this game. He had nine total last weekend in their losses to Liberty. Mets finds Clay Cole. Great an answer. Bradshaw strip, got it back and stays with it, and he's got 20. And, and that's a, I know it's a missed shot, but the outlet pass from one side of the court to find a guy in the wing, they're really looking to pass to find that open shooter. Um, and they pass the ball better than anyone else that you'll see in Division One. James, over three defenders, able to knock it in. And a timeout call, this time for real, by Jacksonville. Do a little isolation. Now, see them doing that a little bit more the second half here to, to kind of cut into this lead. See if they can keep it going. Bellarmine trying to extend that tide a little bit out of the timeout. Lakeholm way out with a shot clock down to 10. Bradshaw lost the handle, has to force it, and hits with two on the shot clock. He's matched his career high with 22 points. And a tough shot. I mean, he's done it all. Offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds. He's gotten steals, blocks. He's been all over the place. He's been the story tonight. He's absolutely been phenomenal. There's a foul called against Justin Betts. That's his third. So Jack with the mass here at Freedom Hall. Welcome back. Bellerin up 14. Son of Scotty Davenport. Russ Davenport. Yeah, some of the Davenport clan there behind the Bellerman bench. James called for the offensive foul. That's his second foul. And Nick, we talked about that a little bit. He, I would like to see Jacksonville get the ball out of his hands, bring the defense to a, a guard, and, and then kick to him to allow him to kind of make a move off of a pass. Um, he's getting a little too deep, and, and he's kind of forcing things a little bit. Ethan Claycomb taking that charge. 
Bradshaw inside to Betts, finishes over Roman. And Bradshaw has to come into an open shot. If he would have got a foot further out, that wouldn't have been an open shot. He got it to him on a place under the rim where he could turn around and have an easy bucket. We've got a technical foul against Ontarius James. So that goes as his third foul. And uh, it's been a frustrating night for him. Forrest, he has 10 points. Didn't have a field goal, though, in the first half. And maybe letting some of that frustration show, picking up the tee. Yeah, and that's what Bellerman does. They take you out of your game defensively. Uh, they double down on him. Uh, he, we talked about it. He's, he's more physical than anyone else on the, on the floor. And he has the ability to take over this game. And he's frustrated that he's not. Um, and a lot of that has to do with Nolan being out and not having uh, someone to kind of rely on and take the pressure off of him. James goes to the bench. Sitting with the three fouls and giving him a chance maybe to cool down a little bit after the tee. Goes back to the point of interruption, so Jacksonville has it. But Knights have opened up now an 18-point lead, matching their biggest of the night. Melbourne doesn't take a play off, and that will frustrate a player that's trying to get something going. And another charge. How many of the Knights taken in this game? Claycomb takes another hit. This one goes against Davis, his third. And they really take pride in taking charges. Uh, it, it, they celebrate charges. It's something they they really, really get behind. Um, and they create a lot of offensive uh, turnovers with them. And Davis, you can see, tried to pull up there and not create the contact, but Claycomb knowing how to fall. Hits the cutting pen here, and he scores it. Dylan Penn now with eight points, and Bellerman has its biggest lead of the night. It's an 8-0 Bellerman run. Point game nearing the midway point of the second half, and Davis has it ripped away. Jessic wanted a foul, doesn't get it, and Cream able to adjust in the air. He's got nine. And Bellman really finding a stride, getting hands on the ball, doubling down on everyone at this point. James is out, so they can kind of focus on the rest of the team and really go down to the, to the core of their defense. Uh, and, and their defense is turning into easy offense. Romick misses inside, and Betts pulls down the rebound. Ben passes up the open jumper. Nice play by Arnold, but back to Fleming, and missed the three. Betts with a tap out. And again, not taking the playoff, not settling, getting a second possession. Fleming missed the deep three, and Cameron Boozer in the game grabs the rebound. Kind of sense the deflation of Jacksonville here as Bellarmine starts to hit their stride. Sides able to keep the dribble as he went to his knee. Davis, tough shot, missed it, but Arnold, the offensive rebound, and that was kicked. Seeing some good examples of the Knights passing the last few trips. And Bellman, it's it's all the way about uh, being in the right time and the right uh, uh, rights by the right time, and, and they they practice that right. It, it's about knowing the game and knowing the situation, knowing your teammates and their habits, and, and um, they cut when they need to cut, and that's creating a lot of easy buckets tonight. A couple of players going to the bench, getting a big hand. Freeman, Claycomb here for Bellerman. Bradshaw back in there. Romick, the floater, yes, his first points. Ten, answers right back, he's in a double figures with ten. He loves that drive to the elbow, one hand little floater, that is his go-to. And I suspect him to go to it a little bit more the second half. He's been quiet in this game. He, he's a very physical guard. Bellerman 
Looking to hold serve in terms of being in first of the ace on. There's a block by Penn. Bradshaw pulls down the rebound. Work it to Fleming. What a pass. And off balance. Couldn't get that one to stay in. And Boozer with a rebound. But a strong cut to the basket. A strong play going to the hole. Penn's got to be happy with that. And sides out of bounds. Back to Bellarmine it goes. That holds. It could suddenly become a two-way tie in the loss column between Bellarmine and the team that has been the class of this league, Liberty. It's a tough conference, you know, from top to bottom. There's and Kennesaw has at the bottom of the conference. They've gotten better each and every game. Uh, Amir, uh, down there, the coach, he's done a great job with that team. I suspect they get better and better. Uh, what a great conference to be in basketball, uh, especially with the additions of three new teams. Dealing with the offensive rebound. Fouled as he tried to get the putback away. Cameron Boozer picks up his first. Yeah, we saw Amir Abdurrahim's team last weekend taking on Bellarmine and uh, Bellarmine kind of blew away Kennesaw State on Friday night but it was a different story on Saturday that was a game that came right down to the wire the Knights were fortunate to win it but uh, you saw that Kennesaw team had a lot of tough shots down the stretch and they're a young team Kennesaw uh, they've got a great coach uh, Coach Amir Rahim was, uh, was at, at Murray State uh, I played at Murray State for a year he was a grad assistant uh, he's a player's coach. He's a great individual guy. Um, he's going to get them in the middle of this league uh, really fast, if not the top. Continue to look for that elusive league win this year. And out of action this weekend. This is their scheduled bye week. Thielen missed a pair at the line. Bradshaw to the bench. We'll see if he gets back in there at 22 points right now, which matches the career high he set against Chattanooga earlier this year. And there's a foul called as Romick went baseline. They got Penn for the reach in his third. And we go back to the Chattanooga game, which was a loss for Bellarmine, without C.J. Fleming. And with C.J. Fleming, that's a different ball game. There, there's a couple games, a Lipscomb uh, sweep here at Freedom Hall. But those are two close games. Bellarmine really could be at the top of this league right now um, if it was a couple swings uh, or a couple shots here and there. Yeah, Lipscomb swept Bellarmine here to start league play. Bellarmine hasn't lost since as Romick knocks down the three. Came into the game. He shoots most of his shots from out there, but was just 9 of 49 from three coming in. He's got five points here tonight. And we saw Chattanooga hit 17 threes against the Knights in that loss. That's something they've gotten progressively better on, it seems like, over the course of the year, defending the three. Fleming misses the three, and there's a rebound to Davis. Arnold missed that one. Penn races in for the rebound, and if they can't get back closer in this one, this will be a rare time when Jacksonville's been blown out, and wow, Dylan Penn called for the offensive foul. He can't believe it. It's his fourth. Let's take another look. Kept him off with that off arm. It's a tough call. You, you, you put that arm out, you extend it, they're going to call it. You don't see that called too often when the ball's kind of loose like that, but Jacksonville got the call there. See if the Dolphins can take advantage. Loser able to get it away and score with a right with a shot clock winding down. Strong, solid move. Points for the freshman. He's down to 17 for the Knights, but by as many as 22. That's in traffic. Fleming from way out. That was deep. Loser the rebound. The bucket here maybe starts to get a little interesting. Davis takes it on Fleming. What a scoop! With a right hand. He definitely has some size on Fleming and going to the hole. 
He's got 10. The 6'6 six, six Davis taking the six foot even Fleming to the basket that time. And a foul. Claycomb off the shot fake, draws the contact from Romick, his first. It's going to put Bellerman into the bonus as Bradshaw and Freem come back for the Knights. And Ethan Claycomb about to head to the line for a one and one. He is the A-Suns' top free throw shooter. 88.5% coming into the game. First trip tonight. Like home. Two points on Saturday last week at Kennesaw. Had 12 in the blowout win Friday night. And there you have it. He missed the free throw right after. You jinxed him. Yep. That's what the argument would be. Just over four minutes left. Bellerin by 16. Trying to continue the winning streak to seven. Jacksonville looking to end a five-game losing streak. Work to do if they want to pull it off. A tough jumper there from Losini Kamara. He's got four. Bradshaw missed the jumper. Sides the rebound and a bucket here and start to get pretty interesting here down the stretch. Kamara now got it out to Arnold. Tough feed, sides, knocks in the three, his fourth made three-pointer. He's got 12, and it's down to an 11-point Bellerman lead. He's got a great follow-through. It's a quick shot, and he can catch fire. We talked about it. All, all seven of the eight A-Sun games for Jacksonville have been decided by six points or less. Trying to knock this one down closer as well. Bradshaw kicks the frame. A three. No. Bats another offensive rebound. Well, that's just a backbreaker. And a smart decision by Betts to bring it back out, get a, a comfortable possession here, uh, and, and get a little more time off the clock. Timeout by deficit and a team that's trying to hold on to that big deficit. Yeah, I mean, as a player, if I'm in the Knights huddle there, I'm I'm teaching this as a three-minute game, right? And can we win this three-minute game uh, by two or three, right? And if I'm Jacksonville, I'm breaking it into two different games here of a minute and a half. And they've got to win a four-minute game and a five-minute game. And scoring there puts them in a little bit deficit, but there's plenty of time here. Um, but you've got to break it up in two different segments. And the best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. Another back-breaking offensive rebound for Bellerman as Bradshaw able to finish. Inside the other way, it's Cameron Boozer. He's got four for Jacksonville. Pedro Bradshaw now with 24 points for the Knights. That, a new career high. Surpassing the 22 he had against Chattanooga earlier this year. He's got eight rebounds to go along with it tonight. Lead 11 after the Boozer bucket. Two minutes to go. Bradshaw on Kamara. Couldn't get free. Shot clock at four. Fleming a look. Missed it. And another offensive rebound for Bellerman. And so we're coming on that minute and a half mark. And, and, and Jacksonville has is basically tied at that point. So they put themselves behind for that second segment of, of this game uh, to cut down in it. Have a chance at it. Dylan Penn one on one with Boozer right to the bucket. Penn with a dozen. And Bellerman leads by a Baker's dozen. Jacksonville has to hurry. Arnold, tough shot. No. Bradshaw, his 10th rebound, a double double for Pedro Bradshaw, the fourth of his career. And who else? Uh, Pedro Bradshaw in the game here with a couple more stats. I mean, what else can he do? His second double double. This year he had 17 points and 14 rebounds in the second game of that Stetson weekend. And tonight he's got 24 and 10. 
And if you look at the Bellarmine bench, you've got guys standing up. Like I talked about earlier, they don't take off any play, and they play the entire game out no matter what the score is. And right before the shot clock horn went off, Penn scores off the Clay Cole assist. Crowd coming to its feet. Kamara kicks out to Arnold. Romick tries a three. An air ball. Did Bradshaw get a hand on that? They say he did not. It'll go to the Knights. I'm really impressed by the Knights tonight. They came in with a game plan. They shut down James. They frustrated James. The, a technical foul. Uh, um, the game plan that, that Bellerman put together, Scott Davenport, and the execution from this team, uh, they've been proven they need to be and they will be at the top of this league. A seventh straight win for Bellarmine. The Knights improved to 7-2 in A-Sun play, while Jacksonville falls for the sixth straight time. The Knights keep it rolling, staying right at the top of the league. They defeat Jacksonville tonight, 71-56, and now both teams will get ready to come back and try to do it all again here tomorrow. And evidently... They're going to say the game is not quite over. I think there was a slight difference between the shot clock and the game clock. So game clock set to 0.5 seconds. they're going to put five tenths of a second on the game clock here. What's your game plan here, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> Try to look good while you touch the ball after it comes in bounds, right? Because you know all eyes are going to be on you. There it is. No! No! Big win for the Knights for us. Knights keep it rolling.